good day everybody and uh, welcome back to the channel master marina ramit sangwan in this video we will see the pipelines on a tanker ship first we're going to see the palace pipelines so what you see on your screen is a mimic diagram of the ballast pipelines on a tanker ship the ballast pipelines on a tanker or a bulk carrier most of the ships it is almost going to be the same okay the cargo pipelines are going to be different because cargo pipelines are there only on tankers they are not there on other type of ships so this video we will concentrate on the ballast pipelines and in the next video we're going to see the cargo pipelines now let us just first start with this if you see on the screen this is the ballast pipeline all right now i'll enlarge this so we can just see how these pipelines are there on the ship okay we'll start from the forward part of this okay first a basic familiarization of these pipelines you see on this particular ship there are six wing tanks of water ballast tank one wings one port one starboard two port two starboard three port three starboard four port four starboard five port five starboard six port six starboard apart from the six wing tanks we also have a four peak tank water ballast tank and you will also have a after peak water ballast tank but that after peak water ballast tank is not shown here in this mimic diagram so after peak is or the stern part of the ship after part of the ship but that day that is not shown here because the ballasting and deballasting of this after peak tank in most of the ships it's carried out by the engine room so it has a separate pipeline separate diagram separate everything so that is not included here okay so we have six wing tanks one four peak tank so we're going to see the ballast pipelines of these tanks and we have two water ballast pumps this is number one water ballast pump this is number two water ballast pump okay so you can ballast and deballast using this ballast pumps then we have an eductor here okay this is the water ballast tank eductor used for stripping the ballast tanks okay here this is the sea chest okay when you need to ballast you're going to open this sea chest now this sea chest is at the bottom part of the ship in pump room so when you open the sea chest it is directly opens to the water sea water and sea water comes from here okay sea water comes from here similarly you have a sea chest on the other side also you have two ballast sea chest this side also so you open this valve and water will come from here okay so we have seen the sea chest we've seen the ballast pumps we have seen the eductor here is the overboard valve we have two overboard valves one on the port side here and one on one on the starboard side here okay when you are ballasting initially the level of the water sea water level is higher than the ballast tanks some portion of the ballast tanks that time you can ballast by gravity means you just open the valves and the water will flow into the ballast tanks till the time the level of the water inside the ballast tank and the sea water level is same okay let uh, for example if the draft of the ship is let's say 7 meters so when you open the sea chest water flows into the tanks by gravity more or less most of the tanks the water will fill up to that level about 7 meters now let's see if you want to ballast by gravity okay you have come to a discharging port you're discharging the cargo when you're discharging the cargo you'll have to take ballast right so the initial ballast can be taken by sea chest if you want your ballasting rate to be more you can use both the sea chest you can use sea chest here on this side starboard side 
and you can use the sea chest on the port side also both so let us see the starboard side you open this valve okay when you open this valve water will come here by gravity then open this valve water reaches here then open this valve water reaches here and now it has come into the ballast line now you can put this water in any of the ballast tanks you want similarly using the port side sea chest open this valve open this valve open this valve and you have the water in the ballast tanks there is a common valve also that means using a port side sea chest you can put water in the starboard side tanks using a starboard side sea chest you can put water in the port side tanks okay so that's ballasting by gravity now let us see the four pick tank here you want to ballast the four pick tank in the four pick tank and in fact in all the ballast tanks you will have two valves okay one valve is the main valve so in this ship this one is the main valve the main valve diameter is more bigger and this is the stripping valve the stripping valve diameter is less when you go inside the tank you will see the height of the main valve above the tank floor is little bit higher the stripple valve is lower than the main valve the stripping valve is used when you are stripping the ballast tank when the level of the water has gone down let's say only about 10 20 centimeters of water is remaining you are using the adductor or even if, when you are using the ballast pump then you are going to use the stripper valve you are not going to use the main valve because the height is more of the main valve it is not going to take suck water from the tank so you are going to use the stripper valve at low levels and the main valve at a higher level okay so when you put you when you want to ballast this we're going to first see the ballasting of the tanks so we have seen by gravity let's say you've opened this valve see chest valves open this valve this valve is open and then you're going to take water in the four pick tank now when you're ballasting you remember first the tank valves has to be open so you have to go in this direction so if you want to ballast your four pick tank you open this valve four pick tank valve is open then you follow this line follow this line follow this line follow this line open this valve open this valve and at the end open this valve this is the sequence you have to follow okay now if you want to open uh, ballast one port water ballast tank this is one port water ballast tank for one port water ballast tank <coughs> this is the main valve open the main valve you will have water coming inside okay when you when you are changing over the valves for example if you have to change over from four peak to one port water ballast tank you have to first open one port water ballast tank and then you have to close four peak tank ballast valve okay <clears throat> if you see closely here you'll see that the outlet of this pipe is in one port water ballast tank but the valve itself is there in number two port water ballast tank the reason for this is let's say if you have any problem with the valve and the valve is not opening or closing or you want to carry out any repairs on this valve and if it is not operating then if the valve itself is placed in one port water ballast tank you will not be able to go inside one port water ballast tank because the ballast is already there you cannot take out that ballast because the valve is not operating so the, for that reason this valve is placed in two port water ballast tank so even when this valve is not operating this tank is going to be full of ballast but you can empty this tank two port because two port water ballast tank valve is in three port operate this valve empty this tank go inside this tank repair this valve so you'll see this sequence in all the tanks so for two port water ballast tank the valve is in three port for three port water ballast tank the valve is in four port for four port water ballast tank the valve is in five port for five port water ballast tank the valve is in six port the for six port water ballast tank the valve is outside normally 
on this ship it is in the pump room here the pump room is not shown so you can empty any tank you can repair any valve of any tank without emptying that tank so that is the purpose why you see all these valves are placed outside the tanks these are the main valves okay this is for one starboard this is for two starboard this is for three starboard this is for four starboard this is for five starboard this is for six starboard the stripper valves are placed inside the tank itself okay now even if your stripper valve is not uh, operating it's not a problem because you need to operate the stripper valve only when the water level is very low inside the tank so even if there is some water below your knee level it is still possible to go inside the ballast tank and repair the valve so you can repair this valve but you have to repair the main valve you can repair the main valve only after emptying the tank because if your main valve is not working basically you will not be able to ballast or deballast the particular tank you can carry out ballasting deballasting with your stripper valve also but the rate is going to be very less in port when you are loading or discharging at a very high rate this valve will not be able to cope up and you will not be able to ballast or deballast this valve or this particular tank in time so that is why the main valve is required okay so we have seen ballasting by gravity what you do is open any tank valve for example if now you want to ballast one port so one port valve is opened follow this line open this valve open this valve open this valve and this tank will be ballasted similarly you can ballast any of these tanks port side also starboard side also now you want to ballast starboard side tanks then you open the starboard side tank valve whichever tank you want to ballast open this common valve if you are using the port side sea chest if you are using the starboard side sea chest you can directly put it here in the tanks so this is how the ballasting by gravity is done okay now the maximum water by gravity has come into the tanks okay by gravity means by gravity right by force itself i mean when the water level is there you've seen the properties of the water that the water flows from a higher level to a lower level if the sea water level is higher and the tank level is low you can take water by gravity once the water level inside the tank and outside sea water level equalizes you will not be able to take any more water by gravity okay then we need to use the pumps okay now we are here in discharge port we are taking water by gravity the level of the water inside all the tanks is same as sea water level now so we cannot take any more ballast by gravity now what we do the remaining water will be taken by the pumps so we'll see how the pumps are operated now so everything is secured after all the ballast by gravity has been taken all these valves this valve this valve this valve this valve this valve is closed tank valves are closed now we are going to start the ballast pump now let us assume that we are going to start number 1 water ballast tank okay number 1 water ballast pump we are going to start now you have to always remember in centrifugal pumps when you're starting the discharge valve has to be kept closed but the tank valve you should keep it open okay you should not pressurize the tank valve but the discharge valve is of such a manner that you can pressurize that valve in fact for all the centrifugal pumps the discharge valve should be kept closed when you're starting the pump on this particular ship this was an electric pump this was also an electric pump but on many ships steam driven pumps are also being provided that doesn't matter that is entirely different so let's say we are going to start this pump what you do is before starting the pump the suction side be open okay suction side should be open so you are going to open this cs valve open this cs valve and make sure you close this valve okay because if you keep this open then the pump may take suction from the tank the tanks will not be ballasted in fact the water will keep on circulating here how water will come from here will go into the pump and it will keep on circulating here so you have to make sure that this valve is closed when you are ballasting by pump <clears throat> so this valve is open this valve is open water is coming to the pump now start the pump pump is started discharge valve is closed 
So once the pump is started, only the discharge valve, this one should be closed. The remaining other valve should be open. We will see that. Okay. So once the pump is started, open the discharge valve slowly. Water has reached here. Now you open this valve. Water has reached here. Now the water is coming here, 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 and it is coming here. It has come here. It has come here. It is not going to go back because this valve is closed. It has come into the pipeline here. And you open the tank which you want to ballast, whether six port or five port or four port or three port or two port, one port, four pick tank, whichever valve you want to ballast as per your plan, open that valve. If you want to ballast the starboard side tanks, open this valve and you can open any of the starboard side tanks, whichever you want to ballast. Okay. So this is ballasting by the pump. Similarly, this we were using number one pump. If you want to use number two pump, what you do is open CHS valve here, this one, open this valve, make sure this valve is closed, start the pump, discharge valve is closed. After starting the pump, open the discharge valve, open this discharge valve and water is here now. And you can open this valve and put water in any of the tanks, port side tank or starboard side tank. This is ballasting by the pump. Very simple. Now, sometimes you may have to slow down the ballasting. You may have to run the pump C to C. That means you're taking the suction to, from the C and you're putting back the discharge into the C. You don't want to put that ballast inside the tank. You want to stop for some time. But you don't want to stop the pump because uh, maybe for after 15 minutes, you have to start the pump again. So that makes the, it is not good for the pump also stopping, starting, stopping, starting. And it is not good for the manpower also because they'll be running up and down to start the pump, especially the engine room team. So if you don't need the pump for about 10, 15 minutes, you may put the pump on C2C. So how to put the pump on C2C? What you do is this valve is open because the pump is running. This valve is open, pump is running, pump is running. This discharge valve is open. What you do is you open the overboard valve here, this one, open this discharge valve. Water will come from here, go into the pump. The pump will pump out the water from here and the water goes out of the overboard valve. After that, you close this valve. Similarly, if you want to run this pump, number two pump on C2C, this valve is open, this valve is open, this valve is closed, discharge valve is open, open the overboard valve here, open this discharge valve, close this discharge valve and water will go like this. Sometimes it may happen that here is the jetty, port side is the jetty. So you cannot use overboard valve on port side because water will fall on the jetty if you do that during de ballasting or during when you're running the pump C2C. So what you do, you open this common valve. Instead of opening this overboard valve, open this overboard valve. So water from this pump will go here, will go here and will go out from this overboard valve. It will not go out from this overboard valve because it is closed. Similarly for starboard pump also, number two pump also, you can open this common valve and open this overboard valve and close this overboard valve. Water will come from here, go here, go here, go here, go here, and will go out of this overboard valve. Okay. So this is running the pumps into C2C mode. We've seen the ballasting. Ballasting we've seen. Now the second is deballasting. <clears throat> now deballasting also, when the tanks are full, what happens is the level of the water inside the tanks is more than the seawater level. Okay, so the initial deballasting you can carry out by gravity. When you are carrying out by carrying out this deballasting by gravity, what happens is the rate of deballasting what you're going to get is more. Now the pumps has certain capacity; it will run at that capacity only. For example, on this ship, these two pumps have a capacity of 1200 cubes per hour. So the maximum deballasting rate what you can achieve is 1200 for this pump and 1200 for this pump, both the pumps you're running, you'll get 2400 cubes, 2400 cubes per hour. But when you're deballasting by gravity, the water is going to go out by gravity with maximum force. Okay. So the deballasting rate, which will be achieved, which will, will be, it will be more. So till the time the level of the water inside the tank is more than the level of seawater level, you can deballast by gravity. Deballasting by gravity is very simple. Now let's see, you want to deballast any tank by gravity. You're going to deballast four peak tank or one pure tank. Let's take one port tank, water ballast tank. You're going to deballast by gravity. So what you do is you open this valve, tank valve is open. From the tank, 
since the level of water is higher the water is going to come inside this pipe it's going to come inside this pipe here here then you're going to open this valve water has come here open this valve water come here open the cs valve water goes out and the water will keep going out till the time either you don't stop the tank valve you don't close the valves or the level of the water inside the tank is equal to the sea water level it will keep going out similarly you can debelast any of the tanks by gravity this is by using the port side sea chest or you may use the starboard side sea chest also open the tank valve okay let's imagine one port only we have opened one open this valve here water comes here open this valve open this valve open with this valve water goes out now after some time the level of the water inside the tank will be equal to the sea water level the remaining water inside the ballast tank you will not be able to debelast by gravity then what we are going to do then we are going to start the pump for example the level of water inside the one port water ballast tank is below the sea water level now you want to debelast it so how you going to debelast it by pump let us see this let's see imagine you're going to use one port water ballast tank so what you do the suction side of the pump should be open first so this cs you close this you close open this valve open the tank valve so water from the tank is going to come into this pipe and it is going into the suction of the ballast pump now open the overboard valve open this discharge valve these two valves you open okay only the main discharge valve should be kept closed when you're running the pump water is already there on the suction side start the pump once the pump is started open the discharge valve when you open the discharge valve the water goes out from the discharge valve goes out from this valve and goes out from the overboard if you're using the overboard on the other side water will go out from this overboard similarly if you're using number two pump what you do is open this tank valve one port open this valve open this valve start the pump open the discharge valve open this valve and water goes out from the overboard valve so this is debelasting by pump so we have seen ballasting by gravity ballasting by pump debelasting by gravity debelasting by pump now let's assume that the level of the water inside the tanks has gone very low now only 10 15 centimeters of water is remaining inside the tank and after some time at this level the main pumps the main centrifugal pumps will stop taking suction and they will not be able to debelast okay these centrifugal pumps they're not able to create suction on the suction side what happens is when the water flows to the pump by gravity it throws out that water but it itself is not able to create too much suction so that remaining water once it has gone below the level of the pump which is about 10 20 centimeters it will not be able to take out that water that time what you do is stop this pump stop this pump close all valves now we are going to use the eductor the remaining water we are going to pump out by using eductor here the eductor is going to play <coughs> an important role so this is the eductor working of the eductor we'll see some other time now let us just see the pipelines here if you look at this eductor here this is the eductor eductor is just a pipe with the shape works on the bernoulli's theorem okay one side is the suction side one side is the discharge side one side is the eductor uh, drive side okay the discharge is going out from the overboard here so you see you can use port side overboard or you can use starboard side overboard whichever is convenient okay so this is the discharge so the discharge from the eductor is going to go out from the overboard so we have seen this side now this is the drive side okay what happens is water is going to flow from the drive into the eductor with pressure the drive is given by a pump now this drive can be given by either the ballast pump or by some other pump on this particular ship the drive was given by the fire pump okay so you start the fire pump that line is not shown here so if you start the fire pump let's say the fire pump is here in the engine room it is connected with this drive start the fire pump water will come out into the drive from the drive it is going to go out of the overboard okay now 
before understanding this, doctor, read about Bernoulli's uh, principle, Bernoulli's theorem. P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. That is pressure 1 into volume 1 is equal to pressure 2 into volume 2. Okay. So that's how the principle, the Bernoulli's principle works and the eductor works. That I'm not going to explain here. So when the water from the drive goes into the eductor, it is going to go out of the discharge. When it goes out of the discharge on this side of the eductor, it is going to create a vacuum. It is going to create a vacuum. So in this pipeline, the vacuum is created here. There is vacuum in this pipe. There is vacuum in this pipe. Now, if you want to educt the port side tanks, open this valve. You open this valve. In this pipeline, the vacuum is created. When the vacuum is going to create created anything, it is going to pull inside. This kind of a sound is going to come and it is going to pull anything, whatever is there. So let's say there was 15 centimeters of ballast in one port water ballast tank. You're going to open the stripper valve. When you open the stripper valve, there is vacuum already vacuum already inside the tank. The water will be sucked here in this pipe. It will be sucked in, in this pipe like this, like this, like this, like this. And it will go out of the overboard valve through the eductor. Similarly, you want to educt the starboard side tanks. Open this valve. There will be vacuum here in this pipe. And you can educt any tank by opening the stripper valve. You can use the same line also to educt the starboard side if you use this common valve. So this is how the eductor is used. The capacity of eductor is very less. So you, you cannot use, this, use it for deballasting in bulk, but only if that remaining 5, 10, 15 centimeters of ballast, you can educt it by eductor. It is going to take a lot of time. Okay, The rate of eductor on a 40,000 ton a ship is, let's say, about 100, 200 cubes only. Okay. So only the final stripping is to be carried out by the eductor. In some other video, we'll see how this eductor works. But this is it. So this is how the pipelines are there. The ballast pipelines are there on a ship. You see, this is the shape of the ship, outline of the ship. These are the ballast tanks. Okay. Now these are segregated ballast tanks. All the tanker ships are now supposed to have a segregated ballast tank. That means that ballast tanks cannot be used for carrying cargo or anything else. This will be dedicated to carry only ballast tanks or only ballast. And the pumps are to be segregated. That means only use for ballasting, deballasting. And the pipelines are going to be segregated. That means only for ballasting and deballasting. So this system is entirely segregated from the cargo system. It is used only for ballast. So there are no chances of pollution here. Okay. Only the ballast is being pumped out or pumped in. So this is how the pipelines are there on the ship. Ballast pipelines. There are few more things here if you see there there are pink lines also here now if i try to explain this it will be a little bit complicated till this part time it was simple but okay i'll explain it in short also for example some water has leaked uh, some cargo has leaked into any of the ballast tanks so when the cargo has leaked they are going to be cargo vapors the atmosphere inside these ballast tanks is not going to be explosive because cargo is there Oxygen is there. Static is there. Explosion can take any place. It can take place any time. So how do we prevent that explosion? Right? What do we do in the cargo tanks? We put inert gas inside. Similarly, we can put inert gas inside this also. If there's a spool piece here, and if you see this, from vapor recycle and inert gas pipeline system on deck, you connect this spool piece here. Now this is connected to the IG line. When the spool piece is connected here, IG will flow into the ballast line. And you can put IG inside this ballast tank. When you're putting IG inside the ballast tank, the water is cut. Uh, the correction, the oxygen is cut. Inside the IG, the oxygen is less than 8%. Less than 8% oxygen, you cannot have fire or explosion. So that is why this separate line is also provided here. Now, this is a compressed air line. The pink line is a compressed air line. Basically, this is provided. <coughs> to check the integrity of the CHS valve that it is not leaking. Okay. What happens here is 
you see this air will go here you close this valve and close this valve put pressure inside this valve okay put pressure in inside this line and then close the compressed air line and then see the pressure drop if for 5 10 15 minutes the pressure is not dropping that means the c chest valve is holding okay this c chest valve is holding here here there is no leak because if the the valve is leaking the air will be released into the sea but if it is not getting released that means this valve is holding so this is how you check the integrity of this CHS valves. For this, the compressed air line is provided. Okay. Now, this C chest, if you see this another line is also provided here. There is a spool piece here. Now it is disconnected. But here, this pink line is the cargo line. If you need to take ballast in the cargo line, you put this spool piece, a connection between these two pipes and open the CHS valve. Water will come back, come here and it will flow into the cargo line. If you need to ballast any of your cargo tanks for tank cleaning purpose or for any other purpose, if you need water in the cargo line, you can take this water. So that also you have to check the integrity test of the CHS valve. Now this is the CHS valve for cargo. This is the compressed air line. Okay. This side it is closed. No spool piece is there. The valve is closed. Put pressure inside this pipe here. In this pipe. And see the pressure is holding. If the pressure is holding, it is not leaking. If the pressure is not holding, that means the sea water, the sea chest valve is leaking. And if it is leaking, what may happen is if the spool piece is connected, cargo may flow into the sea chest, into the sea and can cause pollution. So that is why we have to carry out the integrity test of the sea chest valve. Now that is not required here. The spool piece is not connected. Most of the ship, in fact, all the time, this spool piece is supposed to be disconnected. It is to be connected only when it is required to be done to take water inside the cargo land. Anyways, this part, this section is a little bit complicated. We will not discuss any further on this. But uh, I hope uh, we have understood this ballast pipelines here on this ship. Most of the ships, you'll see that the segregated ballast lines are like this only. Wherever you go, all the ships, you'll find the same. All right. Gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. I hope uh, this ballast pipelines is clear to you all. In the next video, we're going to see the cargo pipelines on a tanker ship. Okay. Till then, thank you. And if you like this video, please share this video with your friends. Also, please don't forget to subscribe this channel. I'll keep making uh, this kind of videos for uh, students who are going on ships for training purpose. Also, junior officers can see this video for a better explanation. Thank you. And I hope you got to learn something with this. Please don't forget to subscribe this channel. Master Mariner, Amit Sangwan. Thank you.